out. So the best of the Super Juniors finals is set to main event New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion. This announcement came out uh, during night five of the tournament that the tournament finals would main event the show, meaning that John Moxley defending the IWGP world title against evil will be the semi main event. And young boy, we had a, a ton of questions here um, about that matchup and just a switching of things. So I think we should just, go through the questions. Cause I think a lot of the talking points will be in the questions. Yeah. You know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, Jeremy, uh, the last couple of weeks I've been in training for my new advisory position with my company, um, which juggling that and keeping up to date on best of the super juniors has taken up a lot of my time. So I don't, I I'm not up to date on like podcasts. I'm not, you know, if you've noticed, I've been a lot less active on Twitter. I'm glad. I'm sure you're probably glad for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not getting us in trouble or anything of that nature. And uh, I don't know what the public feeling is about this announcement. Of course, I heard about it and I'm ready to unpack it, but I'm not sure what people are thinking from all the various different camps and, uh, you know, you know, the AEW camp, the pro gatekeeper camp, the Shinny Han freak camp, like all, all these different people. I don't know what they're thinking and what their feelings are, but I've got opinions. Well, yeah. And a lot of other people have opinions too. So <laughs> let's jump uh, into these questions. Oh, first, uh, Rambo's in the chat. You're, you're going to have to clue me in on what the prevailing thought and feeling is. Cause I'm, I'm unaware. Okay. Uh, Rambo's in the chat. He says, is Mox going to have to go on excursion to Mexico after getting voted out of the main event. <laughs> That's hilarious. For for any listeners that are not clued in, um, actually, it didn't did it happen? Yeah, it did. Um, Naito, uh, early in his career, uh, headlined a Wrestle Kingdom against Okada for the title after he won the G1. He lost that main that uh, semi main event, and instead of going on last, they went to a fan vote, and the intercontinental title headlined that year's wrestle kingdom with tanahashi and nakamura on top and then later on naito went on a excursion to mexico and sort of developed the uh lij character that you know today uh abandoning the stardust genius so uh that's kind of a funny comment there well uh, our first question does come from uh ram bones here he says do you believe the recent announcement that the best of super junior finals are the main event, of, main event of Dominion is a last-minute change, something that was always a potential option, or the plan all along. If it wasn't the plan, do you think the decisions means more marketable stars like Hiromu and Despi need to be in the finals to carry that card? That's a great question, and I, I hadn't really considered whether or not this was the original plan or an audible. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. Did that fan poll that that popped up on twitter did we talk about that last week or did that uh, we didn't talk about it on this show i did talk about it on one of my news updates last week behind the payball five dollar tier grade one tier patreon i did two news updates last week so i did talk about it there okay great yeah so if you guys are throwing down your five dollars or your ten dollars you guys are getting that uh bonus content which is awesome but um if one's to believe that the company is react you know reactionary to uh that online discourse then it would seem to me that this was not the plan and that it was uh, a shift but i i don't know that to be you know for certain what do you think yeah so i, I kind of think it was the plan and uh shout out to front of the show joe lanza he talked about this today uh behind their paywall uh was the wrestling patreon on one of their flagship pluses and kind of breaking down kind of the timeline and whether or not this was a plan, a shift. You know, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, Mox is not a draw, and that's the reason why it was pushed to the semi-main event. And, uh, you know, he was kind of pointing out that, you know, from from beginning of the tour, it was announced that the finals were going to happen at Dominion. I think even before, like, in, like, March, it whenever they way, It was way before. Yeah, whenever they announced the lineup, it was announced that the finals would be taking place at Dominion. So that was out there early and we know typically super juniors has its own final show and that final match of main events that show so i'll see now with being a dominion i think it's definitely possible that that was a plan from the beginning um and you you know you look back at 
you know, the whole like Mox argument he broke down and some of the draw, like how Mox has been drawing well in the U.S. and on the, the Jap- Japanese shows that he's on. So I don't think it was necessarily like, oh, we are going to Mox is not drawing, so we need to do this main event. I think it's well, it's a tournament finals, and it would kind of make the tournament secondary if it was not on the main event of the show. Well, um, I wish I had prepared, and because uh, now I'm starting to think back, and I'm like. Did the Super Juniors, um, you know, finals, did that always headline even on shows where potentially the the title, um, you know, was also defended? Because that did occur, I believe, sometimes, I think, like in the 90s. I'm thinking back to like the 96, 97 um, Super Juniors. Maybe someone in the chat can look. I don't know. But um, yeah. Um- Lanza went back to 2009 and every okay. finals had been the main event of the show. It was on and somebody gave him a stat that since 1997 that the finals has always been the main event on the show. It's on. But uh, but it's not often or even, you know, common that the IWGP title would be defended on the same show. My feeling is that typically you would expect the IWGP title to to be the final match regardless of tournament finals or not. That's just kind of standard practice for New Japan, just going back for pretty much forever. Um, I could see it both ways. I, I do think that with them making that announcement way ahead of time that this final was going to take place on Dominion, they obviously had some sort of plan in place and and a reason for having the finals at Dominion as opposed to on their own show. And you know New Japan loves to split these up and do as many dates as they possibly can to, to milk as much business as possible. Um, I, I don't think it was necessarily that the company had the foresight was thinking, oh, Mox isn't a draw so he needs the added assistance i i don't think that's the case because so far while i wouldn't say that he's been um you know outstanding in terms of business in the states he's been very strong and he's been about status quo with what you've you would come to expect in the buildings and the the configurations that they've run in japan so i think he's doing a good job um in terms of business uh probably not too different from you know where they were with naito on top honestly uh which people probably don't want to hear that but that's that's what the numbers show um i do think though the point that rambo brought up here the idea that you know going into this tournament i think you and you and i jeremy when we briefly talked about super juniors we we discussed a lot of different people having an open potential to get into the finals especially with them doing the you know, two people get from each block uh, format. But now with them headlining, it does seem like, and I'm just going to say it, it seems like it'd be very unlikely that anybody other than Hiromu and Desperado headline the show because that's just the biggest match that they have (laughs) for the juniors. That's um, something they've headlined in the past that's done big business. Um, And Hiromu has been talking about headlining a major show as a junior for years and years. So there's a lot of, you know, storyline there. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, that's been a big thing for Hiromu and it, it could be a thing of where they knew that, all right, we're booking Moxley versus evil for the title match and kind of having some foresight, knowing our diehard fan base is probably not going to love that match. It's probably going to be a ton of interference. We're going to end with heat. Uh, and we don't want to end Dominion like that. We want to end with a great main event, you know, a classic main event and for Romu and Despi. And I think with it being the main event, uh, I think that's a pretty much almost a lock now for that match to be the finals or uh, at least one of them is going to be in that final. Yeah, the only, the only thing that um, potentially leads me to think that maybe i don't know maybe it was a happy accident but the timing is very dubious at best the idea that they only made this announcement after a fan poll came to you know prominence online where a lot of people 
uh, were stating that they didn't that they'd rather see the Super Juniors final headline over John Moxley versus Evil Watsonabe. Um, maybe that was always the the plan, but it's just I don't know if that's coincidental, if it's an actual reaction. You know, it, it's it's strange timing to say the least. Yeah, that's the one thing for the camp that's like, oh, this was definitely a change was, yeah, that that fan poll from that blogger came out last week, had about 350 votes, 80 percent wanting to see the Super Junior final. And also you had Kadani quote tweeting that person saying, you know, we need to take this vote seriously. Also, Kadani had another tweet later on the week saying, you know, we heard the feedback from, from fans and we apologize. And there's a lot of changes we need to make, blah, 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 blah. Um, so all of that is like it's, it's lining up at the same time that this announcement is happening too. Yeah, and that's very strange um, to kind of get that reaction from the company. I mean, I don't know. There have been plenty of times over the years where fans have been unhappy with things and have complained, and there there wasn't like an official response. <laughs> or or something shifted in a monumental way like this so i don't know i think that's it's strange you know it's hard to get a read on it um you know and it does really fan the flames for the the camps that are completely against the idea of john moxley versus evil and you know i i don't know jeremy i Last week, you and I, we kind of, I felt like we were devil's advocate and we kind of played that role and we said like, well, you know, look at the booking layout where everything is. And it kind of seemed like they were going this way. Plus they, they uh, had already sort of, sh you know, shown their hand a little bit when they did the tease at the, uh, the show in, in Ontario, California. Uh, what was it? Resurgence? Yeah. Yeah. But um, listening to, you know, I have listened to a few other people and like everybody else is like outraged, <laughs> like completely and utterly outraged at this match, which like I'm wondering, like, are you and I just like, uh, are we at a point where we're just like, it is what it is? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that we've kind of, you know, bend the knee to the fact of evil and how's of torture. And uh, but like, I think like we said last week. What were their realistic options? Did, uh, did we, my question is, did we go too easy on this shit? Everyone else is, is fucking pissed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it's easier to be pissed when you're not like watching every show and not seeing the breakdown and the booking of what's been happening for the last couple of years now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I don't love the idea that evil is challenging John Moxley. I would, you know... <laughs> Heck, put in, you know, uh, a young line in there. <laughs> Bolton's right there. Right, yeah. I mean, I'll see there, there are better options to have a better title match, but there's a lot of moving pieces between, uh, you know, what are you, what are we doing with Zach? Are we saving him for later? Uh, Umino, Suji, when are we going to pull the trigger on these guys? They're just, and they've already challenged. There's a lot of, like, moving pieces going on, and then you have Moxley as champion, there's so many factors that go into who should challenge at Dominion. And if it's not going to be the main event, I mean, at least it looks like we're going to be slayed to have a great main event of the show now. Yeah. Um, so maybe I guess we could move on to the next question. Great. Uh, thanks for that one. Yeah. So next from uh, Wukon 901, it says, how do you guys feel about the Boss J finals being the main event for Dominion? Um, I'm a little conflicted to be honest with you because number one, um, not that I don't think that the juniors deserve it and that they won't have a great match. I'm sure they will. And, uh, it's, it's a change and, and, you know, it's exciting whether it was pre-planned or not. Um, either way, it is a positive sign because if it is something where the company's reacting to the fan feedback then that's positive or if it is something where they already had the foresight to begin with that's also positive so it, it on the one hand i do think it it's good at the same time the traditionalist in me is like well evil or nah the iwgp title is the iwgp world heavyweight title and you know i i'm not going to go into full blow like you know 
blowing my gasket sort of thing and being like this, you know, I, I'm not going to make the same arguments I made for, <laughs> for the Will Hobbs match, but it is another case of where the title is somewhat being devalued, which is not what you want for the main prize in your company. And whether that's just bad booking or whether this was necessary because of the outrage or whether they just realized like they're not going to send the fans home happy with that match, or I don't know. I'm nervous. Evil is going to win the title at this point, but uh, <laughs> um. I don't know. I, I'm I, again, very conflicted on it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think that I like it just because the alternative was evil closing another dominion. Uh, so from that standpoint, I, I am happy that, yeah, we're going to get a, a great main event. It's going to be super junior finals. I think it's a little bit of an interesting twist to not have the winner challenging the junior champion at Dominion because I feel like that kind of goes by quick. So now it seems like there's going to be some buildup now between when the winner can actually challenge, give them a little bit of chance to breathe and actually kind of carry that flag and trophy around before they immediately challenge. I I guess, but it's going to be against show most likely. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know. (laughs) Besides that, I'm fine. But, you know, obviously it'd be a lot different if it was like, you know, Mox for Saber, and it's like, really, we're not going to main event with that over the finals. So, but I think this is the, the right call for right now. Uh, Def Triangle 720 says, with evil and Mox in the semi main, do you think we could see evil appear on dynamite to add something to their feud? I would f- highly doubt it. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if they did that. I think the last angle was the resurgence, and then we'll get back and forth promos. He also asked, do you think the company might sacrifice a new final uh, instead of Hiromi versus Despi with it now being the main event at Dominion? Um, it, it's possible. It's And we're going to talk about those scenarios because we're uh, probably a couple weeks out at this point, and it, that picture is becoming a little bit more clear about what you know opportunities are in front of them, but I don't know, man, like when you're talking about a show of that magnitude, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of don't like it. And I was going to make this point earlier. I just, it slipped my mind. Uh, Once you say that the, the, the main event is the finals. Now everything has shifted, or at least you would assume it has to where they're probably uh, tipping off their, their hand that it's going to be a match of major stars which isn't necessarily the worst thing, but we've seen Hiromu and Desperado many times in the past, including in the tournament finals of this tournament. <laughs> what twice before? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So this would be like the third final with those guys. If in fact, that's what they decide to do. Maybe they're going to go a different way. Um, I don't know what the business, what the ticket sales of dominion look like if they've already started, maybe, Maybe they're pulling a, we already got your money kid. I don't know, but yeah. uh, it seems like they're going to need a, a strong drawing match. And that's the biggest match they have. Yeah. You know, and I haven't looked at the ticket sales to see what it's at right now, but you know, there are a lot of tile matches on that show. Um, and so potentially there is a chance that they could pull a surprise final and try to bank on the drawing power of all the other title matches. And we know that there's a Naito match that hasn't been announced yet. The full card's not announced. So they could potentially try to rely on the drawing power of A, it being Dominion, the second biggest show of the year traditionally, and then having all these other big singles matches, they could potentially take a risk on pushing somebody new in that final. Yeah, I know that uh, the tickets are on sale uh, right now. But I think they just went on sale like 22 hours ago, I believe. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, April 15th, they went on sale. Okay. Um, Def Triangle also asked, do you think it was pre-planned with having the Boss J final main event over the world title or the company actually saw that no one was excited about another evil main event? Kind of covered that. Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure. But uh, the one thing I will say is, there is an opportunity to play into the storyline implications of the idea that they didn't go 
with the world title in the top spot. And maybe that being because of either John Moxley and or evil and whatever, uh, you know, kind of promos they're able to cut off of that, whatever story they're, they're able to tell based off of those results, which could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's last question here. Do you think we might get some surprises at dominion? Uh, they've, they've done a lot of surprises in the past at dominion. So I don't see why it wouldn't be, uh, you know, on the table. Yeah. I definitely expect some kind of angle or surprise. I mean, forbidden door is going to be right around the corner as well. Building a G1. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of angle that takes place at that show. Uh, next set of questions here from Les Commission 7252. How important is it for the juniors from now on to the rest of the year to make an impact after being given the main event at Dominion? Is this a sign of something to expect in the near future for juniors to main event big time shows? It, it's a step in the right direction. It's not like, uh, in the the entirety of the history of new japan they've never done anything like this they have um but it's been a long time since juniors were on top in a major show granted at the same time this the catalyst behind this is the finals of the super juniors which happens every year um and it, it's not like i'm not seeing necessarily the path for them to continue this trend you know, throughout the rest of the year where we see them like headline KOP, you know, King of pro wrestling or something like that. I, I don't know, but um, you know, it's got to start somewhere if it's going to happen at all. And this is a good step, but I don't anticipate this becoming a, a regular thing personally. Yeah. Just because, you know, like we've been saying, you know, Hiromu and Desperado are the two top stars. There's only so many times that you can do that match before, um, you know, it gets run, ran to the ground and has diminishing returns. Um, so I, I have a hard time seeing yeah, a bunch of junior main events that, yeah, you know, King of Pro Wrestling and Power Struggle and even Wrestle Kingdom. It's just hard to believe right now. Uh, you also asked, should the company not resort back to Hiroma versus Desperado in the main event at Dominion? They could make a new star in Kevin Knight or Francesco Akira against a veteran and former champion in El Desperado or Kushida. Or they can do this, and it might be a bad idea, but have show go to the finals, and the main event could be the Boss J Trophy and the Junior Heavyweight Championship. Uh, that's an interesting possibility. I hadn't really considered that idea. Um, that would certainly set a new precedent. They've never done anything like that. Um, and mo most major tournaments, there is no title on the line whatsoever i mean i'm starting i'm thinking back and like the only time that they've done anything like that other than like crowning an inaugural champion is like maybe the 1983 iwgp you know league when uh when hogan beat Inoki. um but that would be that basically be it i don't know i'm i'm hesitant to say like do I think it would be great if they pushed like a Kevin Knight or Francesco Kira? Sure. But if they're going to do that, whoever that is, then it's got to be somebody that they absolutely have major plans and, um, you know, really plan to put, you know, a jet pack behind that person and, and shoot them to the moon. Yeah. It, it can't, it can't be, <clears throat> excuse me. It can't be a uh, master Watto situation where, um, you know, yeah, he he won last year, got the big, uh, you know, strap on the back for that win, but then immediately lost to what it was Hiromu, right? He lost to, and then after that, it was like he was nowhere, and then he got hurt. Um, so I don't think that Super Juniors really ended up benefiting him at all. Um, so yeah, if they are going to go with, yeah, Kevin Knight, Akira, Fujita, there's a lot of young guys that are, you know, doing really well in this tournament. If they are going to go with one of those guys, then yeah, then they need to, there needs to be a full-on plan. They need to win a title. They need to be, you know, bookmarked for Russell Kingdom. They need to get behind that person. Absolutely. Uh, Hawaiian Punch BB says, do you think that Hiromu will interfere in every Moxley title match so he holds the title to Russell Kingdom? It would be Hiromu's best chance to main event Russell Kingdom with a junior title match. What? <laughs> so I, I think he's trying to uh, play on the joke of, of the, the camp that thinks... 
Mox can't main event shows. So if Mox holds the title to Wrestle Kingdom, Hiromi could get the main event because, quote unquote, Mox is not a good draw. Oh, I see. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> so he's going to interfere in all of Moxley's matches to ensure that Moxley retains. That way, when Wrestle Kingdom comes around, he's the bigger star and he can headline as, you know, challenging or defending the junior title. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, last set of questions here from Trish from the Trish and Sarah Wrestling Podcast here on Social Suplex. Uh, first, it says, if it was Naito versus Evil up against the Boss J main event in a fan poll, which would win? Uh, I would have to imagine that it would be Naito and Evil, honestly. Um, and, and that's not to say that uh, John Moxley isn't doing good business, but th- it, there are two things. If you read the comments from the fans about this uh you know, this match in particular, the negative comments, it wasn't just that the, that there's a large contingent of fans that, that don't get or don't enjoy the house torture act. Although that was a huge part of it. There's also the sentiment that like you have an outsider, they they're holding our title hostage. They're not working here regularly. That sentiment definitely exists. So when you combine both of those things, it's two combustible elements for the domestic audience. And again, Twitter is just a a sample size. I mean, it is interesting that the idea that they would even shift anything based off of the opinion of what 300 people. Yeah. (laughs) Like that's not, that's not indicative of, I mean, if you look at the business numbers, the metrics, like John Moxley is doing a good job. Is he like, you know, a gangbusters draw doing like, you know, top end business, like no, but nobody is including Naito. Um, but he's right in line with what they what they've been doing with Naito on, on top for the first you know quarter of the year. So, uh, but yeah, if if that fan poll was put up, I'd have to imagine with Naito and Evil there, you don't have two strikes; you just have the one strike. And you know, Naito's a darling of of that you know domestic audience, so I'm sure that probably would have won. Yeah, I think if honestly for the, the poll to be fair in that situation, I think you would have to know what the final junior match is because if you did a, a poll of evil Naito and they, we know it's Romu Desperado, I think it would be a little bit closer. Potentially, but I can't think of any other match that would be on the table from the juniors that would be a close call at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, Trish also asked, what are the positives and negatives of this run ending at Forbidden Door or continuing after? I think she's talking about uh, John Moxley's title run. That's a great question. So, I mean, I think the positives in the short term are uh, a boost to business, at least specifically in the States, which has been needed. And I mean, that's a that's a solid run if you're just looking at the business they did in Chicago and then in California, the night that's a nice little house. And then whatever house they draw at forbidden door, which if, you know, let's just say hypothetically it's Naito versus Mox and Naito wins the title back there. Uh, that's that, that's strong business that they did. Uh, you get John Moxley, you give him a, a bit of a gold watch. Not that he's not a hard worker, doesn't deserve it, but it's a little bit of a gold watch and you get him into the legacy of your title, which is a positive, um, you know, put some Western eyeballs on the product. I mean, those are, those are all positives. Um, the negatives to me, I feel like the, the actual kayfabe of the story of, of the work that was presented isn't the strongest, it, you know, for him to turn around and drop the title. I think the two most likely contenders you would you would have, given its forbidden door, would either be um, Zack Saber Jr. or Tetsuya Naito. And it is a fairly short title reign. It's not necessarily chock full of great matches, and there's not an incredible narrative that you can look back at and say like this was necessary. This was really really successful. I mean, on the business front, it probably is. But I feel like, you know, and and you're going to have these negatives and positives extend 
be on Forbidden Door on the flip side because if Mox continues to hold the title, it might not be the business sensation that it has been in this short term. It might struggle to do good business beyond, you know, going to say like January 4th. But now you've opened up the p- potential for like the show to Umino run, which could narratively be, you know, much stronger. So it's tough. I think there's, there's, uh, you know, drawbacks and, and positives both ways. Yeah. Forbidden door just doesn't seem like the right place to drop the title for a lot of the reasons you've mentioned. And, uh, I feel like it's kind of almost like a cheap kind of loss to, for him to, to drop it in the United States, especially if it's going back to a guy like Naito or somebody that's established like Zach. And obviously we're all, all in the cap, camp of Zach getting the title, but I don't know if like winning at Forbidden Door is the right spot for Zach to win the title. And I, I feel like the the, the, the ben, more beneficial thing is for him to go to Wrestle Kingdom to do this whole Umino storyline. But then some of the negatives there, like, all right, that means G1 season. Like, is Mox going to do G1? Uh, he would have to. It it would be a it would be detrimental to the company for him to hold the title and stay stateside and not be involved in G1. That would be a huge misstep. Yeah. And, and then um, if he's still a champion in that time period, you know, what does he do in the fall? Like he's, there's not a ton of credible challengers for him already. So like, who do you pull out at destruction and at King of Pro wrestling at power struggle? Like you have to give him at least two to three more defenses before you get to the dome. And like, are there actually credible people that you want him to beat? in that time frame yeah that's a great question and something i hadn't really considered um as well you know the 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 other thing too is like he has this match with Takeshita coming up fairly shortly right yep at a uh, double or nothing this coming sunday okay and then within a very short amount of time he has to turn around come to japan by evil and then he's turning around and went how what's the time frame between forbidden door and dominion isn't it like just a week so dominion is june 9th and i believe forbidden door is june 30th if i if i got that right okay so there's still some time yeah okay because i was thinking like what if the narrative remember how like uh naito part of the reason that you could believe that he dropped the title is like the he had that busy schedule. He was going back and forth and he defended the title. He sort of overextended himself. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a similar, similar narrative for Moxley to turn around and do the same thing. He's racking up these defenses, whether it's on, you know, TV with AEW or these big pay-per-views. And then, you know, forbidden door comes and, and Naito comes a calling. <laughs> Uh, Rambo's with a good point in the chat. It's hard to see Mox off AW TV for an entire G1 run during TV rights negotiation season. Yeah, and that's probably the the major reason why you would expect him to drop the title before uh, the G1. And it's another reason why I'm kind of nervous about the prospects of him and evil and the potential that evil might win this title because i think it's it's not a zero percent chance i think it's actually fairly high yeah i know i think a lot of people are kind of counting evil out but i do think there is a high likely a higher than most people want to think likelihood of him winning that title this the the, the one thing that hurts evil's chances is that forbidden doors right afterwards and we've seen that tony khan does not really care to have evil on his tv or on pay-per-view so i think that he would probably lobby for Mox to keep the belt and to do the IWGP title match at Forbidden Door. House of Torture and Evil are going to be on Forbidden Door. And I know that people have said, like, Tony Khan's not a fan of them because they haven't done shows in the past. And maybe there is some truth to that. But, like, he sure trusted them enough to work with Jungle Boy and, and align themselves in that way. And you think that they're not going to turn around and come come back for Forbidden Door and, and team with either you know, Jack Perry and, or potentially the elite, that's probably going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely see like, this being the year that, yeah, they finally 
Yeah, that show. So you have Evil's not defending the title there. Then yeah, there'll be some kind of multi-man like the Elite and House of Torture team up against you know whoever team AW could be for that night or whatever. Okada and Evil Dream Team. <laughs> you know, last week it, I'm so disconnected from um, AW right now because I've been so busy. Like last week, you were like, obviously this is happening, and you mentioned something with. That was New Japan adjacent with AEW. I don't remember what it was. And I literally, like, in the back of my head was like, I had no clue that was happening. Like, <laughs> whatever it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rambo says, Gato doing terrorism booking is a real thing. <laughs> yeah, and you, you do have to wonder if this potential shift, whether it was orchestrated or not, if this is lending credence to one hand not knowing what the other is doing when it comes to the rumors of the booking, you know, and the office being at odds with one another, you know, on the domestic side. And is this more evidence to point in that, that direction? I don't know. Yeah. 